Good morning. You all are rowdy today. That's marvelous. Welcome to worship at First Christian Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Swansea, Massachusetts. Whether you're here in person, watching online at home or on cable, you are most welcome to this day's worship, a day indeed which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin our worship with passing the peace. Peace be with you. Also with you, may God's peace rest upon you, within you, among you, this day and always. Will all who are willing and able please rise for this morning's call to worship. God calls the simple, the weak, the powerless. God's wisdom is stronger than our strength. God's foolishness is wiser than our wisdom. God calls the hopeless, the lonely, the lost. God's tenderness chooses us in spite of our needs, in spite of our fears. God calls the persecuted and the pitiful and the pathetic. God's love is larger than we imagine, closer than we think, and mightier than anything else in the universe. Let us worship God together. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First, number 42 in your blue hymnal. into your church to be your people in the world. We are ready to hear you. Please speak to us. We are ready to follow you. Please give us courage. We are ready to change our ways. Please grant us steadfastness. With all our doubts and fears and shortcomings, we have decided to follow Jesus in our time and place. Guide us with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I invite all who are young at heart, all our children and youth, to please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. So, I'm going to give each of you one of these. Friendship, yes. But what's even better than candy is the feeling you get when you give candy to 
somebody else. It really is true. Because when you give candy to somebody else, the smile, the thank you, their body just like relaxes into like enjoying you. It's kind of an amazing thing. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. So, giving candy away or anything away is actually super selfish. What? I know. Is that crazy? What does selfish mean? Keeping stuff to yourself. It's all good for me. Oh, yeah, I want to do things that are good for me. Being, giving someone candy is selfish? Isn't that crazy? Actually, it turns out that giving things to someone else, helping someone else, actually gives you an amazing feeling. It releases all these chemicals in your body, and it's actually better for you, and you'll enjoy it more even than eating the candy yourself. Think that's true? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm lying to you because I just want you to give the candy to me. <laughs> <laughs> but really, having that experience of giving is actually the most selfish thing you can do. And Jesus was kind of onto this. He talked about how you were blessed. Let's talk about this upstairs here today. How you're blessed when you give, when you live in ways that benefit others. And so, Believe it or not, giving away the candy will really do good things for you. Good things for your soul, good things for your heart, but just good things for your body. It's super selfish. So this is what I'm going to challenge you to do. Before you go out today, find someone out there to give your candy to. Really. And then look at them. Like, Look what happens. What, what do you feel inside you when you do it? What do you see in them when it happens? And I promise you this too, I've got more candy downstairs. And I'm really selfish, so I'd love to give you more later. Okay? All right, let's pray. Oh, Jesus, thank you for showing us that the way to happiness is actually giving and loving and putting yourself out there. Amen. All right.
Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Micah, chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Listen now, listen to God. Take your stand in court. If you have a complaint, tell the mountains. Make your case to the hills. And now, mountains, hear God's case. Listen, jury earth. For I am bringing charges against my people. I am building a case against Israel. Dear people, how have I done you wrong? Have I burned you, worn you out? <clears throat> Answer, I delivered you from a bad life in Egypt. I paid a good price to get you out of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you and Aaron and Miriam to boot. Remember what Balak, king of Moab, tried to pull and how Balaam, son of Beor, turned the tables on him. Remember all those stories about Shittim and Golgoth? Keep all God's salvation stories fresh and present. How can I stand up before God and show proper respect to the high God? Should I bring an armload of offerings topped up with yearling calves? Would God be impressed with thousands of rams, with buckets and barrels of olive oil? Would he be moved if I sacrificed my firstborn child, my precious baby, to cancel my sin? But God already made it plain how to live, what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It is quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love. And don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. Here ends. today is Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he said. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less you, you there is more for God and his rule. Those who mourn, you're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. The meek, you're blessed when you're content with just who you are no more, no less. That's a moment you find yourself proud, owners of everything that can't be bought. Those who hunger and thirst, you're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. The merciful, you're blessed when you care at the moment of being careful and find yourself cared for. The pure in heart, you're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. The peacemakers, you're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. The persecuted, you're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. 
Not only that, count yourself blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a chair, even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My <laughs> prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Here ends the reading. of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock, our salvation. Amen. So I read an article this week by a man named Dan Harris, and he has a website and a podcast called 10% Happier. 10% Happier, sounds pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, he goes and understands that we all struggle with what it means to be happier or happiness. You know, Americans in particular, we chase happiness a lot. And so he got invited to travel to speak with the Dalai Lama, which is a rare and wonderful opportunity, especially as the Dalai Lama is now 87 years old, but still very vigorous. And in sitting together with the Dalai Lama, Dan Harris was talking to him about, well, how can I be selfish and selfless. It seems like I have to be all of one or all of the other. There's no middle ground. And so I either feel horrible that I'm not serving people all the time, or I feel totally run down and burnt out because I'm not taking care of myself. And the Dalai Lama said that actually truly enlightened self-interest means recognizing that when we're generous, we're altruistic when we care for others, when we put ourselves out there, it actually makes us healthier and actually starts a virtuous cycle. That actually, there's something called wise selfishness. So that I under, come to understand that by being selfish, by caring for others, in that way of being selfish, I'm actually caring for myself. The more I care for you, the better I feel about myself and so on and so on, and that grows. The more I care about you, the more I feel better, and then the more you're able to open up to me, which makes me feel better, which means the more I'm able to connect with you, and it goes around and around and around, in a good way. So, the Dalai Lama said that thinking in a more compassionate way is the best way, actually, to fulfill your own self-interest. And he said that his own practice was to think about benefiting other people as much as possible, at which point he said, the result, I get benefit. And then he laughed. <laughs> Some other people have called this not selfishness or selflessness, but otherish. As a kind of a middle ground, otherish. <laughs> and so that when we are otherish focused, it pulls us out of our own kind of self-contained pulled into just ourselves, exhausting loops of self-involvement, self-thinking, and which, quite frankly, our society encourages. How much money do we have? How much am I acting in my own interest? How much have I bought? How many likes do I have on my Instagram page? And I have to tell you, this article really gave me a new window into the Beatitudes, which is the reading we've had today. And I sort of crammed two different translations together because I wanted you to see, blessed are those who mourn, and then I wanted you to see what the message version had to say about that so that we didn't get lost as we go through. Because I think the message version, which is the most of our text, really comes to understand this otherish, or this wise selfishness. Now keep in mind, when we think about the Beatitudes, this is Jesus speaking in a context that's a bit different than ours. All the people he'd be talking to 
they would understand they were under the rule of the Roman Empire. Taxes were so high that people were constantly losing what little hand land they had. They were having to sell their children into slavery. Um, malnutrition was constant. And so one of the reasons Jesus is healing people all the time is because people were always sick because they didn't have enough to eat to even keep basic health in their bodies. There was a lot of corruption. The poor were everywhere. And here comes this man, Jesus, from the peasant class saying that God is on the side of the poor. And that those who are poor and hurting and mourning and meek and seeking peace, all those undesirables are the blessed. Now this can be challenging for us to think about though, because when we read the Beatitudes that we have traditionally, it always, I have, and other people have said, okay, do this and then you'll be blessed. Do that and then. So it's like, oh, it's giving us a list of what we're supposed to do, but actually what it is saying, what the text is really saying is that we are already blessed and invites us to lean into that, to lean into that. It's not something that we're out there to gain, like a job promotion, to be blessed, but it's something that we already are, that God has already covered us in blessing. And so our job is to recognize it and to lean into it. It's not either blessed or cursed. It's not either totally blessed or complete selfishness like a, some cretin, but it's wise selfishness. And the wisdom is actually very important. There's a play by Thornton Wilder called Heaven's My Destination. And it's a comedy about a man who tries to put these beatitudes into reality in his life. And the results are somewhat disastrous, quite frankly. <laughs> when he goes to the bank and talks to the teller, he refuses to accept the interest that's been added to his savings account. He said because he doesn't want to benefit from the interest that's being charged on loans to the poor. <clears throat> He's trying to explain this to the teller and explain this to the teller and explain it, refusing the money. And this long discussion actually ends up with a run on the bank because other customers hearing him talking to so much, so much, so much, assume that something is wrong at the bank and everybody starts demanding their money and pretty soon there's a run on the bank. And so the implication in this play is that the Beatitudes either result in ridiculous comedy or tragedy. But it doesn't have to be that way. So Jesus came to earth and begins his ministry, which we follow in this epiphany season, the sharing of the light, the spreading of the light. And he comes to tell us that we are blessed. And more so as we live into being a blessing to others. We are blessed when we focus on what God is leading us to do rather than the loud voices of the world of money or TikTok views. We are blessed as we take brave steps to point out what's wrong or unfair or just casually cruel in our workplace, even if we have to sustain some sneers from others. So we live in a place of blessing. We are blessed. And then as we give to others, that blessing just rebounds upon us. We're even more blessed. So Jesus is really giving us a recipe for a healthy life. Now in our world, the world around us, often science and religion are pitted against each other. You can't be a scientist and have faith. You can't have faith and believe in science. You can't follow God and follow scientific discoveries and technology. And I'll tell you, that is baloney, pure and simple. It's just not true. These two do not have to be in conflict but rather one enlightens the other, enlightens the other, enlightens the other. Now, science has caught up enough that now we know, and I mean factually know, that those who give, those who are altruistic, those who live in that way of giving to others and being mindful of others, that wise selfishness, actually live healthier lives. We know from science that those who give them themselves in a wise way, actually heal their physical bodies. They lower their blood pressure. They release endorphins, which are the joy molecules that run around our bodies. So, you know, Jesus knew 2,000 years ago what the science is just now proving, that humans who choose a life 
of leaning into the work of being a blessing are more blessed in return. So I tell you, today's basic message for you to take out with you, two words, be selfish. <laughs> go out and be selfish. Seriously, go out, love others, do things for others, care for others, not in wildly unsustainable ways, but in ways big and small, because that's selfish. You will gain so much more in return. You will literally heal your body and mind and soul. So be wisely selfish, otherish. Let me tell you a story, true story, by Leslie Wagner, who lives in Michigan. She said one day she was at the supermarket tallying up her groceries, and when she got all through, she realized it was $12 more than what she actually had on her. So she began to remove a few items from the bag when the person behind her, the shopper, handed her a $20 bill and said, please, you know, cover your groceries. And the woman said, no, 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 I, I, I don't, don't put yourself out. And the person behind her said, look, let me tell you a story. My mother is in the hospital with cancer. I visit her every day and I bring her flowers. She said, I went this morning and my mother got mad at me for spending money, more money on flowers. <laughs> she demanded that I do something else with that money. So here, please accept this. It is my mother's flowers. And so in the giving, the woman who received her groceries was blessed. In the giving, the woman who was trying to show her mother how much she loved her by bringing her flowers was blessed. And in the giving, the woman in the hospital now knew that it wasn't flowers she was receiving this day, but the gift of grace and compassion to another person. Just one act and boomerang, boomerang, boomerang blessing. That is the world Jesus calls us to live into. And that is the world, my friends, that actually is the one that is best for us, that will heal us, that will make us whole. And so, go out this week and be wisely selfish, otherish. For as you become a blessing, the blessing grows and grows within you. Amen. I invite all who are willing and able to rise for our next hymn, We Cannot Own the Sunlit Sky. It's number 563 in your black hymnal.
pray is also a blessing, a blessing that gives and gives and rebounds blessing upon us. It is a gift of our faith, it is a gift that we do together as a congregation. So let us come together in prayer. Holy God, we are grateful for the light of Jesus spreading in this epiphany time, illuminating new paths, new challenges, new ways in which your love calls us forward to engage with one another and with the world. We are continually grateful for Jesus, whose life shows us how to live life in abundance. That by leaning into that blessing that you bestow upon us, the moment of our birth, that we grow ever more and more into a blessed life. That truly, the ways in which we are fed and healed and made whole are the ways in which we give of ourselves, our lives, our money, our thoughts, the ways in which we grow ever closer to you. We thank you that our faith gives us this star to reorient our lives when we get lost, when we feel alone, when we aren't sure what decision to make, that we can return to you again and again and again, and you receive us with love and blessing anew. We pray that as we go out strengthened from worship, we remember through the week the call, the words of Jesus, the blessing that we're invited to share. We are part of a world that is beautiful and terrible, that is life-giving, and that destroys lives too. Help us to be your light in places of challenge and darkness and struggle. We pray for our community. We pray for those in this area who go out to sea in the dangerous waters for fishing. We pray for first responders who run into fires as those run out and run into domestic violence situation as others run away. We pray for all those who care, for people who are broken and struggling and mourning. We pray for counselors and therapists. We pray for all who knit our community together, trying to patch the ragged holes that life leaves. We pray for our nation, especially the people of Memphis who are struggling with and mourning the death of a young man in police custody. We pray with Californians as one mass shooting after another goes through their communities. We pray for our world, for all the signs of hope amid signs of struggle. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray for soldiers fighting, for civilians struggling with those they've lost. We pray for migrants on our own borders and on so many borders, fleeing violence, fleeing economic hopelessness. We pray for refugees, remembering too that you, Jesus, were a refugee once as well. We pray with hope and gratitude for all of those who are working and leaning into blessing by being a blessing to others. O oh, Jesus, hear us now as we offer in this silence the quiet prayers of our hearts. Gather up these prayers, O oh Christ, 
as we pray in your name the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I cannot promise you many things, but I can promise you that every dollar you put into today's offering will be a blessing to you and to others. So I invite you into some selfish generosity for this morning's offering. printed in your bulletin. O oh God, through the offering of these gifts, may we become a more open people, 
open-minded in hearing your word and wisdom, open-hearted in healing a broken world, open-handed in sharing our money and gifts with the world. With thanks for all good things, we present these offerings. Amen. Our closing hymn is You Are the Salt for the Earth, O People, number 181 in your black hymnal. Go forth into the world, Godspeed, live selfishly into the love that Christ has blessed you with. And may you go in peace, with joy, with serenity, with hope, this day and always. Amen.